In case you missed it, I got hacked. And I lost, in the process, access to my YouTube account, access to my Google Drive account, and access to 17 years worth of Google Photos, and all of this stuff ended up in the hands of some pretty unscrupulous people. <laughs> I'm in danger! So the answer to the question, am I an idiot, is, um... Yes. Yes, I am an idiot. So I wanted to talk a little bit about the fallout from being hacked, the fact that two-factor authentication is almost entirely pointless on Google, and why, and more importantly, what you can do about it, and also why a guy that worked in the technical industry for 20 years fell for this scam in the first place. This story goes a lot deeper than you might first have realized, and to discover how far into the rabbit hole it goes, you'll have to wait until later on in the video. Oh, thank you, Bates. My butler, Bates. I suppose you're waiting for a baiting joke now, aren't you? I'm not going to allow myself to that level. His name is Master Bait. I thought as we go through this, I'll also answer some of the hate mail that I got throughout this process. Cause that's always fun. Ha ha ha! You got hacked and you deserved it. You deserved it! Deserved it. That's, that's what they wrote. What I heard was something slightly different. Ha ha ha! I've got a tiny penis! I've got a tiny penis! Tiny penis. But the primary purpose of this video is to tell you all of the things that I wish I'd known before this happened to me, so that I could have stopped it from happening. This advice comes from some of the most unbelievably credited people. Jonathan Cousson is a cybersecurity expert and a new friend of mine, and I, I owe him so much because he spent so much of his time helping me out with this. Thank you, Jonathan. Also, a chap from Microsoft's Dart team who was incredibly helpful, and even a chap from the Department of Defense. I'm not even joking. That's where this advice comes from. Before we get into this, though, I honestly need to give you guys the biggest heartfelt thank you of my entire life. When I got hacked and I put that video out, I was clearly upset and people rushed to help me uh, through financial support, which is just mind blowing. I can't get over it. Um, and just obviously words of encouragement to keep doing what I do. And I, I, I just it was life affirming. So thank you so much for that. Um, I've spent the money straight back on the channel because that's where it belongs. And I have bought myself uh, software security licenses and virtual machine licenses and even an Apple Mac. Would you? Would you? The Apple Mac's actually been purchased for video editing purposes. Believe me when I tell you, I am not an Apple fan. People got a little bit upset when I uttered this phrase. That caused some rage. And now, a word from our partner Ferreo! Reginald, what's that you've got there? That's right! It's a handheld spa facial treatment from our partner, Ferreo of Sweden! If you're looking for a gift for the wife, then this technological little whiz-bang suits all skin types, and who doesn't like technology? Makes my wife positively giddy. But why should she get all the fun? The Ferreo UFO 2 isn't just for women, Reginald. Until recently, I've always used the traditional methods to keep a man's skin healthy, such as a wire brush and a preposterous amount of aftershave. But Ferreo's various hydrating face masks work for all skin types and keep me looking ridiculously handsome. I am ridiculously handsome. Ferreo are experts in skincare technology and produce many fantastic products. But the UFO2 Supercharged Facial Device is my personal favorite because it gives you a spa facial in just two minutes. Its app can be downloaded to your pocket telephone to personalize and recreate your very own spa treatment from home and even control the device remotely. Its pulsating head helps the skincare products penetrate the skin deeper below the surface, leaving my skin nourished and glowing and there's no better gift for the woman in your life than healthy looking skin buy one for your lady by clicking the link in the description below and now back to our main feature 
would not be safer on an Apple Mac. The only operating system incapable of getting viruses is Home Assistant. You should do all of your video editing and all of your emailing via the YAML configuration files, you ingrate! A few people were quite enraged that I had suggested an Apple Mac might be a safer option. This particular individual suggested that I take responsibility for my own actions. Just, just gonna just try to recap my own actions here. So, I scanned a virus using Microsoft Defender to ask Microsoft if this virus was a virus, and Microsoft said that the virus was not in fact a virus and was in fact safe. Microsoft then allowed me to run that virus, despite the fact that it's got a malformed icon and that it is in fact a screensaver file in 2023, and this screensaver file then ran a script on my computer to take the cookies from my Google Chrome browser. Just trying to figure out in that example which one of us didn't live up to our responsibilities. Was it me that scanned the file, or was it Microsoft that let a three-year-old known piece of malware obliterate my life for a week? It's a tough one. Listen, Macs and Linux get viruses. I understand why those people were annoyed with me. I shouldn't have used the word never. I should never have said this never would have happened on a Mac because it could happen on a Mac. Windows has, to this date, 76% of the market share of computers out there in the wild. And so hackers tend to code up their viruses to work with Windows rather than with, say, Apple Macs or Linux or Chrome OS. I shouldn't have used the word never, I should have used the term unlikely. An Apple Mac or a Linux machine is still a good security step. But if you want to take it one step further, a Chromebook will protect you even further. Chrome OS doesn't let one app control another app without your permission. So whatever virus you downloaded, that's an app. And if that thing wants to be able to get you to your Chrome cookies, you're gonna have to tell it that's okay. Either way, a move away from Windows will make you statistically way less likely to get screwed the way I did. Screw me, screw me just like that. None of this is enough to ensure that you are 100% safe. Let me just make that 100% clear. We're going to talk about other security measures in a moment, but it will significantly reduce the likelihood that this virus could shoot its load. Uh -oh! It's payload. If you are going to use Windows, please enable the visibility of the file extensions in your Explorer window. If you can't see this, you won't know and you will almost certainly fall for the scam. My virus looked like a PDF. If I had known at the time that an SCR file was in fact an executable, and not just some new Adobe extension I'd not heard of, then I would have been saved simply by looking at the extension. Even this won't necessarily save you, because PDFs themselves can execute malicious code. Because why not? Why wouldn't they be able to do that? This brings me on to my next recommendation. Doing all of your email downloading and opening of attachments on a Chromebook is obviously the best solution, but the next best thing to having a separate computer for email is a virtual machine. A virtual machine is an operating system inside of an operating system. In my example here, I have Windows 10 installed inside Windows 11 using a solution called VMware. It is actually really easy to set up. It allows me to download and open attachments on an operating system that I don't give a toss about. And this operating system has no access to my password manager, my YouTube account, or my online banking. If you don't allow that operating system access to anything that matters, then even if you get infected, the virus has nothing to access. Because nothing is perfect, there are of course very rare viruses that can jump from the virtual machine to your host. Why wouldn't there be? Bastards. The best way to combat this is to run different operating systems between your host and your virtual machine. You could run a virtual Linux machine inside your Windows machine because there is practically zero chance that someone has coded up a virus that can run on both. That would be mental. Tune in next week when some bastard has done that. I thought two-factor authentication was bulletproof. It isn't. So. In Google land, if a hacker is actually logged in as you using your cookies, which is what they did to me, 
They can use your existing login to go in and change all of your two-factor authentication without first providing a two-factor authentication key. Google, uh, if you're watching, please, for the love of God, I have had the biggest argument with their staff. I have tried to convince them this is the most ridiculous and dangerous and most pointless use of two-factor authentication because if it can be swapped out without providing a two-factor key, then anyone that's logged in can just steal your account. And that's what they did to me. They stole my account and I couldn't get back in. I was blown away to discover later on, after all this was resolved, that Google offers something called an advanced protection program that they just keep a secret. They didn't even tell me about it after I got hacked. They, just, they were just like, sorted, see you later. No, what? Why aren't you telling me about it? This is like if Princess Leia gave the Death Star plans to R2-D2 and R2-D2 just f***ed off. YouTube D2, where have you gone? What have you got there? That's a new two-factor authentication, bitch. You, you can't just run away with it. Oh, yes, I can. Goodbye. What? See you later, bitch. Get back here. Nah. Goodbye, bitches. Woo! Why aren't you telling anybody about it? The Advanced Protection Program basically does what Google should already do for everybody. It seemingly forces re-authentication if your session suddenly switches IP address to, I don't know, Russia? This wouldn't have stopped the hackers getting in, but it would have stopped them kicking me out, and I could have solved the problem in an hour instead of over the course of three agonizing days. I'll link the Advanced Protection Program in the description. You will have to buy a physical two-factor authentication key, but every security expert I've spoken to has said do exactly that. They are far more secure than using the Google Authenticator app, which is what I was using personally, and the Advanced Protection Program that sits behind it all will protect you in the way that I've just described. Now for the most important advice in this entire video. You can trust nobody. The internet is a dangerous, dangerous place. You will never find a more wretched hive of scum and villainy. We must be cautious. Never give any personal information in response to an email. If someone is emailing you, asking you for information, shouldn't they already have it? If they have an existing relationship with you, they should already have that information. If they're asking for passwords, if they're asking for an update to your home address, if they're asking for anything at all, just go log on to their website and punch it in, if it's not already there. If that person in the email is asking for it, why don't they already have it? They should already have it, and they're probably scammers. Don't click on links in email unless you absolutely have to. And if you are going to click a link in an email, hover over it first and you'll see where it's going to take you. Does that address look weird? Does that address look like it belongs to your bank? If it doesn't, don't click it. And a final reminder, open that file in your virtual machine. Don't open it on anything that matters, because if it is dangerous, it's gonna screw you. If it is dangerous and it's in a virtual machine, it can't screw you. Oh yeah! Please share this video with your family. I know that um, you probably know a lot of this information already. You're probably a technical person if you're watching a technical YouTube channel, but your family and friends are usually the people most vulnerable to this sort of thing. And I think this advice might prove invaluable to them. Like I said, it's not my advice. It came from some really, really cool security professionals. This list is nowhere near exhaustive. I shall put some information in the description as to other things that you can do to protect yourself. And please do me a favor, just add some comments below this to say, Paul, you missed this. This is a great idea. This is a thing that I do. You should do this. You should do that. That would be great. As long as it's not bollocks. It's, there are people out there that talk bollocks. I'm afraid. <laughs> Shut up, Wesley. I will never forget what you guys did for me, ever. And I'm going to commemorate it. I've asked my friend if he can do me this, uh, I had this bizarre idea that I would have him inscribe the source code for the virus that got me onto a piece of slate and hang it on my wall. It will act as a reminder not only to never make this mistake again, but to remember that the world is actually filled with beautiful people because you did this amazing thing for me and my channel is still here because of you. It was here in the first place because of my patrons and it remains in place because of the people that not only financially support me, but also give me these amazing words of encouragement to keep doing what I'm doing. If you want to be one of those incredible people, by the way, they are my patrons running keep getting told it's down, not down the screen, it's up the screen. 
I don't, am I doing this? I don't care. They're doing that now because they are amazing people and they deserve all the recognition in the world. If you want to be one of those incredible people, you can do that at either Patreon or buy me a one-off beer at PayPal, and either way, I will genuinely love you forever. Please hit the subscribe button, ding the bell if you've not done that already, and come and hang out with me on my social medias. These are my Facebooks and my Twitters and my Instagrams and my TikToks too. See you there. Tiny penis. <laughs>